Hey everyone, you want to know something that may or may not immediately get this video demonetized? I'm transgender. Wow, incredible! This isn't some wild revelation or anything, because I came out as trans over half a year ago. Yeah, I know, time, time really flies. But I only ever really talked about it in my community tab. I was thinking on making a video about it, but I wrote a ton of scripts over the past, like, full year, and was satisfied with a grand total of zero of them. Nothing fit the high standards I set for the channel, but even before I started uploading videos, I wanted to make one about my awakening and everything that led up to my coming out, but I kept running into the same problem. On one hand, I don't want to just be seen as a trans YouTuber. I just want to be a YouTuber, no strings attached. But at the same time, me being trans, pan, and ace are all pretty big parts of who I am. And it's not just like I can lump them together in one long sentence and call it a day. They're all individual, unique pieces of a puzzle that make me... me. Y you know how in the Kirby's Return to Dreamland commercial, alone they are incredible, together they are unstoppable? Kinda like that. It's, it's not nearly as cool and I would replace incredible and unstoppable with a part of me and mental anxiety, my favorite. But it's, it's a red commercial, I like it a lot. The mind can often wander into some rather dangerous territory, and when mine does, I often find myself doubting, well, everything. Not just my LGBT identity like we're talking about in this video, it extends much farther, even other important things like the YouTube channel. In an odd sort of way though, I, I find comfort in that. These things that I worry about, I, I only do so because they're part of my identity, and I know that it's all a big part of who I want to be. I want to be a YouTuber. I want to be a Kirby fan. I want to have a crippling addiction to Fire Emblem here. Uh, actually, no, no. Scratch that last part. So after all of this failed script, what did I finally settle on? Something stupidly basic, actually. To celebrate what is close enough to me trying and failing to make this script, uh... Tolerable. I am just going to talk about me being pan, ace, and trans. Ultimately, I want this video to be able to help other people. People that might relate to or empathize with my story. People that are questioning themselves or even people that are wondering about who the heck I am behind the scenes. I'm not picky. I just want to make people feel better and I don't know, maybe you can leave a like, comment, ring the notification bell after subscribing. It's all free, please, and thank you. Before going any further, we gotta ask, what the heck is a trans anyway? Can you eat one? I have really been thinking about food a lot lately, haven't I? There are many different ways that different people define it, but to keep it simple, it's when someone does not identify with the gender that they were assigned with at birth. For example, I am a trans woman. When the doctors yanked me out, they didn't say, oh my god, it's a girl. I mean, I don't exactly know what they said, for, for all I know, they plugged my YouTube channel to all of the other doctors in the office, like, 24 years before I started my channel. Like and subscribe. But the point is, even though I wasn't born with the quote-unquote body of a girl, I identify as a woman. I have some stories from a very young age that I can look back on and think, <laughs> wow, that's, that, that's funny to think on now, but not... All of these define me as trans. I remember things like wanting to play with Barbie dolls, watching girly cartoons like Powerpuff Girls over boys' cartoons like Hey Arnold. Both of these shows are incredible, by the way, regardless of anything as irrelevant as gender. And there's even a memory I have of me asking my mom if I could wear my sister's clothes when she had to wear some of mine. Uh, again, funny stories looking back, but I don't see any of this as definitively trans. Being a young boy and doing more girly things is totally fine does not immediately mean, okay, you're trans. Being a feminine boy is totally fine. Round my one half though? Okay, alright, alright. Let me explain for all of those who have no idea what Ramna is and are wondering, can you... I gotta stop thinking about food. <laughs> Alright, the important part is that because of some kind of curse or something, again, 15 years, if these two characters get cold water poured on them, they, uh, they change. The dad becomes a panda and Ranma becomes a girl. Yeah, you can see where this is going. I remember so many nights where I dreamed what it would be like if I <laughs> suffered this curse 
and temporarily turned into a girl. I, I know kids think of stuff like this with or without Rama involved, but I really looked forward to having these dreams. Being a girl, doing both the masculine and feminine things, but being seen as a girl regardless, all that good stuff. It wasn't as simple as a kid being imaginative. I thought about being a girl and genuinely did not want to be a boy anymore. Unfortunately for me, I stopped watching Ranma right before I entered middle school, when everything stinks. Without getting into too much, middle school for me was really bad for a lot of reasons. But to keep everything related to what we're talking about, you had to be cis and straight or else it was fine to be physically, verbally, and some other third thing bullied. Guys dressing as girls was basically asking to get beaten up, which really hurt, but it's not like girls dressing as guys was seen as that much better. Things were already bad enough, so I just told myself, just, just get rid of those thoughts, don't think about it. And you know what? Nobody found out. I still got physically and verbally bullied, just not for wanting to be a girl. <laughs> Oopsie doopsie. Eventually, I got to a point where I decided there is no use in wanting this. It's impossible for me to be a girl. Stop thinking about it. You gotta remember, it wasn't even 2010 yet. Resources for stuff like this were so much harder to find compared to now. I didn't even know what the concept of being trans was. So instead of wanting it more, I just chose to forget. Sure enough, I went to high school, I stopped thinking about it, the bullying stopped. Granted, it was more because people in the school just didn't really care, but still. From there, I graduated, went to college, and for the first time in almost a decade, you'll never guess, I made new friends. Insane, I, 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 I can't believe it either. What was pretty noteworthy about the friends that I made is that almost, if not all, of them were LGBT. I'm not going to name any names, of course, but some of the people I met were trans, and me learning this is a whole story in and of itself. Just know that you get pal Kirby fan ludicrously dense. But at the same time, something felt off. Obviously, I know now that it was the deep depths of my very brain and soul trying to tell me, hey, that is exactly, literally, what you want. Stop forgetting, you big dumb dummy. Of course, it wasn't that easy to remember, and it wasn't until a random casual conversation months later that I remembered... Oh my god. That's right. Wow. It all hit me like a ton of bricks. Extremely slowly, I started coming out to more and more people, and while some it didn't go that great, everyone was ultimately very accepting, which was very nice. Still, something didn't feel quite right. And I had no idea what it was. Everyone was accepting, they used she, her pronouns, either called me Kirby fan or Claire, they called me a girl, to them, I was a girl. It wasn't until somebody specifically called me a woman, and I started thinking about the difference between women and girls, that I realized, oh, wait a second, I've, I've, I've been through a lot, and, and I really don't want to be seen as a girl, you know, an immature little girl. I'm a woman, dang it. I've yet to actually meet anyone else who shares my sentiment. Every woman I know is fine with being called a girl, cis, or trans. So for all I know, this is just a me thing. I take what I can get, and of course, when I'm streaming and I'm the puppy VTuber, people call me a good girl or something. I I'll take that just fine. And technically in dog years, I'm only nearing three years old, so yes, I would be a girl in that case, but it's just such a huge part of my identity, I figured it was worth mentioning. Eventually, I found a close enough center with doctors and nurses actually knowledgeable and able to prescribe hormones legally. I'll never forget my first therapy session because it lasted all of 10 minutes. They just figured... Yeah, wow, she, 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 she sure is trans. Now, I'm almost 28, and I still haven't actually started HRT, Hormone Replacement Therapy, but let me tell you, the day that I start, it's going ever closer. That said, like with any kind of medicine, you really have to be careful with this kind of stuff. I don't want to go into too many specifics about it, but I have what the science calls muscular dystrophy. Basically, my muscles, and especially my muscular tissue, are really bad, like, irrecoverably bad. 
The body has a lot of very, very important muscles that are very, very necessary in order to help you very, very live, and losing out on my current hormones and then replacing them with ones that will make them even weaker on top of the already existing health risks that come along with this territory. Yeah, it's a big yikes. There's even a president in my own family of someone without MD suffering from a heart attack after taking hormones, so, uh... Oopsa doopsa. Once I lose enough weight and I work on having a healthy heart, which by the standards of MD, let's be real, it would be barely passable. I hope, probably not, oh well. I'm hoping that I can finally start. Fingers crossed. So I've known all of that since I was 20, 21, that ballpark. That's given me plenty of time to work on other smaller things. Clothes, fashion sense, shaving, mannerisms, body language, a lot of really helpful stuff. Like, going from taking two hours of total misery, shaving my legs, to only 30 minutes of pure misery, shaving my legs? Pure rush of dopamine. Unfortunately, I'm very much of a perfectionist specifically when it comes to my voice. It ends the struggles of being an aspiring voice acting artist, let me tell ya. So I simply couldn't bring myself to do voice practice. If I'm being perfectly honest with all of you lovely, wonderful people, I still haven't actually started any kind of real vocal training. It's something I have to do since I've definitely hit a roadblock for sounding how I want to sound. It's just mentally for me really hard. No jokes here. It's just, it's really, really hard for me. Like and subscribe. But <laughs> speaking of, you know what certainly helped? Starting my YouTube channel. Yeah, in 2019, I started uploading videos with a far deeper, more masculine-sounding voice. At that point in my life, there was no doubt in my mind already that, yes, I am trans, but I wasn't even close enough to having the voice to sound appropriate. I was hoping that starting the channel would motivate me to practice, but... Say it with me. Oopsily doopsily. Videos reached over 5k views, we passed 2,000 subscribers, and the more time that passed, the more progressively worried that I got. Worried how people would react, how confused people would be, who start with older videos even years from now, all that stuff. When I finally came out, things were complicated, but overall, while I obviously got some nasty comments, most people were very supportive and understanding, which made me very happy and relieved. The trans story, as it were, ends there, but obviously, we've got plenty of video to go. I still gotta talk about being pan, but I'll try and ramble a little bit less compared to what I was saying before. So what the actual heck is a pan anyway? Can you... Oh, okay, no, that one just doesn't work with or without my obsession with food. Anyways, you know what bisexuality is? I think that, but... Ahem, <clears throat> fancy. No? Oh, okay. To me, it's less that I'm attracted to the same gender as me and the opposite gender as me within the binary, like bi people, and more than I'm attracted to people regardless of their gender identity. The person's gender has very little to do with it. Oftentimes, I just tell people I'm bi because, I'll be honest, it's easier and more people know what being bi is, but technically, yeah, I'm pan. But even that isn't fully correct because I'm just saying the word bi. Even swapping bi with pan, that's still technically wrong because I am pan romantic. See, who you're okay with being romantic with and who you want to, uh, <laughs> it doesn't have to be the same thing. In my case, I am pan romantic and asexual. While I may not be interested in... You got the idea. I would love nothing more than to be outside on a nice day. Oh, holding hands with a partner as we talk under an umbrella. Or we talk under a parasol. Hey, now we're talking. For the longest time, I thought you had to be straight until I realized... Not really. No, you don't. You know how in the Kirby Mass Attack commercial, the kid sees the evil tree, says, You again? And doesn't think that he can beat him until he realizes that he can if he has nine clones of himself? It's a fantastic commercial. A and in my head, this is a perfect metaphor, so even if you're lost, it's good enough for me. Unfortunately, not only are we going to start talking sensibly again, but I also don't think I can recall a specific pan awakening, so to speak. 
As a kid, I just liked who I liked, but had no inclinations of romance. Then, by the time romance could be a thing I was developing into, that whole be straight mantra was beaten into my tiny little brain, and then... It wasn't. I can't really give a specific person, or a character, or whatever, because what I felt had never really changed, just how I acted. I remember in college one time, a friend had asked me if I was straight before I really knew that being straight wasn't mandatory. And my response was, sure, why not? I think that summarizes it all pretty well. The thing about me and my pan romantic necessities is that it hasn't impacted my life nearly as much as being trans has. That helped me discover a lot about myself, but all learning about being pan did was confirm what I already knew about myself. But you know what? In a way, it was comforting since that matches pretty heckin' well with how I want to live my life. I have my preferences, of course. You all know Kirby Superstar Ultra, my favorite Kirby game everything, but I love almost half the games in that franchise. I am totally fine with more than just one thing. Okay, but can we talk about my Kirby metaphors today? I am, I am actually going off today. Oh my god. There's just too much going on with life for me to value someone solely based off their gender. As cheesy as I know that this is going to sound, which is fine for me because I love cheese, parmesan, yummy, yummy in my puppy tummy, I really only care about what's on the inside. Oh, wait, I'm not streaming, aren't I? Oh, why did I say puppy? Oh, no. I like cute things, but I'd rather someone's personality be cute than their appearance. And, and yeah, I know, someone's probably furiously typing in the comments, why not both? Yes, both would be great, that's not the point. I feel like we'd be heading into some more complicated territory if we go any further, but again, just to reiterate, that's just not the kind of thing that I think about. And that right there is why I can say that I'm panromantic with not only confidence, but also happiness. When forcing myself to be straight, I always felt kind of bad for having to treat one gender differently from the other. But if I feel the same way about all of them and I don't really treat any gender differently regardless, that's a big ol' yeehaw for me. I've hugged and cuddled with people who are all over the gender spectrum. It, it just feels good to me. No asterisk saying, wait, actually, I feel bad because yabba blah blah blah. blah. It, it's just, it's nice. Even being trans, yeah, sure, it has some issues, but on the reverse end, I don't feel bad about being who I want to be. I'm a woman, I feel good, I love others, I feel good. It's heartwarming to me, and, and sharing what I feel with others, well, it's what I do, I have a YouTube channel, but it can make other people feel that way too, and I really love that. Whew. All right, well, we're done. Thanks for watching, friendos. It's been a while since I said like and subscribe, so go ahead and do that if you forgot. And Ugh. Okay, so coming into a video about a trans woman who was in 100% straight, I'm sure at least some of you expected there to be a bit of a downer vibe to this video, but the real struggle on my end comes from that one word that I've been trying to avoid having to say, I failed, but saying that probably kills any leftover chances I have of being monetized. I don't like being asexual. And I can't even talk about my own experiences of being ace and what it's cost me in my life, because I am most certainly not talking about that subject in any video. If we were nearing the whole uh, TMI thing earlier during the happy fun times, we've crossed that line twice already. You know how in the Kirby Air Ride commercial? Uh, I never mind. It's, honestly, I I'm too bummed to do another one of those. Despite the theming of this video, even the LGBT at large felt kind of lost to me before I had my trans reawakening when I just identified as ace. And there is just, to me at least, this feeling of isolation, loneliness, of not understanding that for me comes with the territory of being ace. And these aren't good feelings, mind you. For example, solitude, a feeling I love, is vastly different from loneliness, a feeling I hate. But, I'm definitely ace, I don't feel anything about it. Cue the cartoon noises. Particular topic, despite how centralized practically all of society worldwide likes to be hyper fixated on it. 
you get to hear some pretty wild rebuttals to coming out as a still. You get some cuckoo bananas reactions for being anything in the LGBT LDL, but based on my own personal experiences, the ace questions are not so ace. I, I like that one, sorry. You have your annoying questions like, hey, ace, like the plan? Or the frustrating ones, like informing you that, of course, you're just a late bloomer. Wow, people really can't think about anything other than plants when they're thinking about ace stuff. Huh? But when people get invasive, like, have you ever tried it? Or you're just faking it to get with someone? Or <laughs> who could possibly forget the endless, the literally timeless classic? I can fix you. And the answer to all of these questions, I can just tell you right now, quite frankly, none of your business. I'm not answering these because you don't need to know, but also because it just doesn't amount to anything. The simple fact is, unless we're super close, talking about a topic like that not only weirds me the heck out, bums me the heck out, and some other third thing, it just doesn't matter to me. I don't want to do that. It should be simple enough, but but no. I've lost a lot because of it, and that's just something I gotta deal with. Oh well, I guess. <sighs> well, I'm sorry for ending that on such a sour note. Also, sorry for the actual script being kind of a mess. I kind of figured that's how this one would turn out, just because of how personal of a video it is. But I really hope at least one of you found value in it. And maybe you were late, and maybe you're going through similar struggles, and maybe you're just on the outside looking in. I don't know, but if I made you feel any better, then in my book, I did my job. You can let me know in the comments, I'd really appreciate it. I already said like and subscribe and everything. Happy Pride Month, everybody!